We've seen how environmental information can be recovered from the rocks that tell us what the depositional conditions were like. Now there's another uh, bit of information we'd like to gather which has to do with the attitude, the structure of the rocks. Uh, the rocks here are not flat lying like they were originally, but they've been tilted. And it's important to a geologist when he goes into an area uh, to determine how the attitude, the tilts of these beds change from place to place around the uh, countryside. And so to do this, he needs to make two fundamental measurements. He needs to determine the strike of the rock unit and the dip of the rock unit. Now strike is defined very precisely. Strike is the compass bearing of a line formed by the intersection of a horizontal plane and an inclined surface. So, if this is a horizontal plane, and this is an inclined surface, if we were to pass this through, keep this horizontal, it forms a line. The direction of that line, the compass bearing, is called the strike. If we, now, the dip is the angle between this horizontal surface and the inclined bed, this angle here, measured perpendicular to strike. So those are two very precise definitions that a geologist must use to make the measurement of strike and dip. So how we do it in the field then, if we have a nice inclined surface like this, we can simply take a compass. This is a special geological compass called a Brunton compass. We can use a compass to measure the direction or compass bearing of strike. And this compass replaces the horizontal plane of the clipboard with the horizontal plane of the compass itself because there's a level bubble here. So we can hold the compass perfectly level and we can read directly off the compass the strike, the compass bearing of this unit. And it reads five degrees west. That's the strike. Now, to measure the dip, I need to measure the angle between the horizontal plane and the inclined surface. To do that, I have another adjustable bubble here. And I can simply uh, adjust this bubble make the bubble level, make sure I'm perpendicular to strike. I don't want to measure this way or this way. I want to measure right down the, right at, at uh, right angles to it. I center the bubble and I can read, this is dipping 33 degrees to the east. So strike and dip, I would measure it here. I would find a similar unit uh, somewhere else, make another measurement. Put these on a geological map, put the rock information on there, could have a nice pattern when I collected all the dots, connected all the dots up, that would give us a structural configuration of the beds. Then when I know that, I can go in and interpret the geological history. In this case, we know they were flat lying during Cretaceous time. After that, the Laramide Revolution in the Rocky Mountains occurred, tilted those, certain forces were involved, and to work out the sequence of events, and exactly where the forces, which direction they were working in, we need to make these fundamental measurements.